Hello everyone, this video is a bit longer and that is because we got over 30 minutes of information and gameplay footage from PC Gamer Review. They revealed many details about the new map and answered some questions what we can expect on launch August 15. And at the end of the video, you can see my reaction on the official hunt trailer. Um, I got 1080p, I see on the pixels. The environment here, even the trees look different, you know, Colorado has a different kind of forestry around it, that makes a lot of sense. Damn. So, you know, what informed the, the... Look how nice it looks, man. Oh my god. ...direction to kind of take the game here as a location. What does this do for Hunt? Yeah, so we, really for us, what we were looking for is what's the next expansion outside of the bayou that kind of fits the core theme of what our game is? We watched this. And we Look, that's the bridge that was shown in the trailer. And I mean, it looks nice. Out all of NATP, our but... feedback and as well as internally, what we really... Look the verticality, man, how high... It goes how I up wanted was to really push the boundaries of what we're capable of doing, right? And so what I mean by that is we had player feedback that said, hey, we really like the verticality in a lot of the compounds, right? Like, there you go. Evan, as you've played this game, you're familiar with it. Some of our best moments are rooftop to roof type game, game to play, right? And so we wanted to capture. You can escape, you know, across the rocks. Or a more of cover. extreme version of leaning into verticality and leaning into this environment that Entrance has to mine, I guess. more slopes, more verticality, and just an overall different scene that we think is a fresh experience inside a Hunt Showdown and really captures, yeah. you know, the essence of us while also saying, hey, this is a new way to play Hunt. So let's talk about these mines. So oh, you know, yeah. mines. my understanding is these mines... Dude, look! They are huge. They're going to connect certain compounds. Like, how does that work in terms of layout? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the center, a big focal point for us was in the center of our maps, we know that that's where all of our players funnel into. And so we kind of wanted to flip the experience on its head and say, hey, we're going to have two mines in the center of the map. And around those oh. mines, there will be compounds that you can get to. So that's very smart. So the mines are going to be in the middle of the map, you know, where usually like all the servers go through. So now, if you want to go there, you need to go through the mines, and the compound's gonna be on the side. That's good, you know. It's gonna change like the generic loop of we the have game. A north mine and a south mine. The north mine will connect two you mines. to um, certain compounds inside of there, and then there is a gap between the two mines, yes, which also has two connecting compounds as well, that leads you to the south mine, which then leads you to another compound. So think of the heart of the map. You have compounds around the edge of the mines, and then you have a oh. connecting route through the mines, which gives you a little bit more safe traversal. But look, at the same time... Look at the view, man. Oh my god. I mean, a lot of sniper spots, but bullet drop, yeah? Keep in mind, bullet drop is being added as well. But look, man. So nice. So the, mount, the mine itself isn't a compound, so I guess the boss won't be there, which is a shame. Maybe next time, maybe in the future, but... Yeah, it's gonna work as, like, moving through the map. Very nice. time you're losing the information that you would normally get in our maps like still water or any of the first look three Crazy. maps because when you're in the middle of the map you normally have more information you have more audio tells and you have crows and you have all these elements that kind of inform you where you're at but when you're in the mines you're taking the chance of saying hey i'm getting less information but i'm more safe to travel yeah really interesting i mean yeah so it's gonna be for rotates you know and running rotating i like it and the view like if you come out of the mine if you like rotate through like, there is one entrance behind this guy and one here, so like, if you go through, you know, you can like, ambush people, they probably won't hear you. There are, of course, Crazy. some underground environments uh, in certain compounds uh, in Hunt. You know, King Snake Mine is, is sort of a, a much smaller version of this. It, it's much more spacious than I expected. Camping tunnels. And, and I guess like... That's possible, you know, people run there with concertinas, with bounty. We'll see, we'll see. So, can you... How many compounds can you reach through the mines, if that makes sense? Like, do they spit out to like three or four of them or more than that yeah so you you can connect it directly to four compounds four. inside of there yeah and i mean look looks like a lot of ways there yeah. and so two of them kind of back up directly into the mine and then there's some that are a little bit more on the outskirts but when you're going through these mines Huge. you'll see signage for like la plata mine or o'donovan stone and that's pointing you in the direction to the closest compound that's right there um, but like La Plata mine is one that's Dude, look how many ways one way there below behind It's it's gonna be a maze. I think <laughs> I mean you'll have to get used to it But I mean maybe it's good because a lot of ways to like rotate and right on the outskirts go behind your enemies Donovan mine is uh, right there 
and so you get a full connection. So another you get way, to be another sneaky, way. you get to go through the mines, and then boom, you're right at the compound looking at the boss layer. And what That's... sort of combat encounters are you anticipating in the mine specifically? Like looking at it, it seems like a great opportunity to stage ambushes. What we originally thought was, okay, well, how many people are actually going to use the mines in early on in playtest, right? Because you know you want to be able to get into the combat. Oh. What are these? And people really like the gunfights in our game. What we that sounded like bets to me. New. You're gonna use it's like a new the mines and early how's it on called? play tests, right? Because you know, animal trap or how do they call you it? You want to be able listen, to listen. get into the combat, and people really like the gunfights in our game. You hear? What we see from our play tests and how everyone seems to be enjoying it is sound trap. It is a little Pause. sound trap. This <laughs> bit of a hide and go seek oh. kind of experience. Look at that camp one, man. Destroyed, broken. Oh my god. Isn't it amazing? Like completely new type of compound as well in Hunt. It's where you go into the mine and you can set up some traps and you can really catch people off guard, but it's very safe inside of there. So you can peek out, look at a compound, get an understanding of if any threats are there and then go back in and then reposition to get a different angle. So it's a little bit of hide and go seek, lots of trap gameplay, but the most important part of the mine, and you, all of our Hunt players know this, is Normally, when you get caught in a position in hunt, it's very hard to get away from your opponents. You're normally like kind of a sitting duck, but in the mines, because there's a lot of different routes and it can lead to a lot of ah, so it's gonna be uh, good for repositioning on the map. You're and actually able away. to reposition and flip the experience, so you have more time to heal. You have uh, different advantage points, and you can kind of turn the tide uh, on the enemy team if you get caught. Can you say anything about the the updates that the existing maps will get? Oh. You know, after the facts this is our most polished map we've ever shipped and most polished map okay and it's a big leap forward for us on visual fidelity both on gen 9 consoles but also on pc as well and so as we were going through this map we identified all of the assets that we were able to up res and also just redo because we have a higher budget because our engine can support it so all of our maps are going to be getting Boys. The similar love. So there is major updates coming to our existing ah. like maps one through three um, that'll be brought to the same level of visual fidelity. Ooh, so old maps are gonna get updated to the new looks of the new engine and new map, right? Not they don't they don't they're not gonna look the same, but like visually it's gonna be better. I'm excited for that as well, you know. Old maps looking better. That's gonna be nice. Right, that's gonna come after this, I guess. After this. And in a couple of them, you know, in uh, like map two is a good example. We are looking to in map two is loss and delta, by the way, intentionally make gameplay changes to some of the compounds to kind of alleviate some of the pain points that our players have expressed to us. So visual is going to be different, but also gameplay wise, the old map is going to be reworked. OK, as you prepare to introduce this map in the big update, uh, what is the initial configuration of the maps going to be? Like, will, will I only be able to play the new Colorado map? Yeah, that's correct. So for the first 30 days of our update, you will only have access to the Colorado map. Um, what do you think about this? For the 30 days after the update, after August 15, we can only play this, this map. Do you think you'll get burnout? I mean, it's a lot of, lot of to do, a lot of to, you know, find out. 30 days, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. You know, at some, at some, it's not going to be only the new map, right? It's going to be all the other stuff at the same time. So maybe you'll get bored of the new map, but maybe there is like so much more stuff that's being added anyway, right? Gameplay wise. And so it's called Mammon's Gulch. So I got to get used to saying Mammon's Gulch versus Colorado. That's when you've been under the hood for a long time. That's what happens. Uh, so you'll be on Mammon's Gulch for a full 30 days. And then after 30 days, uh, we will release uh, the Stillwater Bayou map. Ah. What we know from... So after 30 days, we're going to get a reworked Stillwater, I guess, right? The new Stillwater Bayou map. And look at this. Compound of like Burning City. That's the one we, show, we saw in the trailer, pretty sure. Hunt maps is it takes hundreds of hours to really understand a full map because Thousands, there are one man. kilometer by one kilometer with 16 compounds inside Thousands. of there. So giving people more of a focused attention on the new map is actually beneficial for the players. But Look, that's like a... Firefighters, no? very beneficial for us so we can understand hey what's meshing well with you guys what compounds do we need to look at um based on player feedback to see if we can make any adjustments so scott you know at a top level what kinds of behaviors and experiences did you have in mind as so you guys cool. were building this map right i mean hunt is wonderful because it can accommodate solo stealth sniping and like 
p- people that play really loud and just running with shotguns oh, and it's melee a weapons, inside? right? Like it makes room for that Pick spectrum up. of experiences, right? But I know, of course, that like you guys have had some thoughts around stalemates, for example, mm-hmm. in the last couple of years and how you, you know, manage that, I guess, as a type of behavior. So like what were right. kind of the, 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 those big behaviors or experiences you had in mind as you built this map? Yeah, I'm going to touch on the stalemate part because I think that's the most interesting of what we've done um, here across all of our... Look at this compound, man. It's actually oh, the burning right. inside. So we... If, if you look at the history of Hunt, what we've done to all of our maps is maps Crazy. that have, or compounds that have very few choke points or very few entrances and exits from them, we've kind of tactically increased how many options players get. And so for nice. uh, Mammon Gulch, what we said is, hey, we're going to make sure that every compound has six. It looks the big entrance. I think this is the, the mine they showed, you know, the underground, not, not like fully mines, but. The one they showed in the trailer. Meaningful entrances and exits for attackers and defenders. Six. And so it's that's kind of like a loose rule with six. Sometimes you get a little bit less, but ultimately the main goal was provide more entrances and exits for attackers and defenders to take into consideration while at the same time saying, hey, we know that we want to increase the engagement between the two, but we don't want to be two attackers. Friend. Look at the boss ladder, man. Hey. We know that we want to increase the engagement between the two, but we don't want to be high ceiling. Nice fighting spider will be fun. Two attackers friendly, and we don't want it to be too defender friendly. So try to strike a nice balance Um. between that. And what we see is stalemates can get broken a lot easier now because players are able to get out. But at the same time, it's also a lot harder to defend. So if you try to turtle up, if you don't bring traps and you don't fortify correctly, it is a game changer. So we are seeing more traps get used across the board, which also informed a trap change Water decision traps. with how players can actually place traps. It seems really exciting that like that's... I don't think it's going to be a problem, you know, if there's like more entrances, more traps. I mean, maybe people will bring more, but I mean, the more entrances, the better. The system in particular is going to be pretty flexible, it seemed like. Yeah. But are, are there like particular limitations around it? So you wanted to avoid like, I don't know, players doing something truly, I don't know, uh, har- like exploits evil <laughs> with, with how they place <laughs> traps. You know what I mean? Brutality and hunt are, pre- are pretty synonymous. So we leave it up to the player's creativity as to how far. Uh, they'll push it with the traps. Now, we do have constraints as to, you know, which way, how the trap placement does work. It, what we feel really good about is them being able to go across windows, across the board. So if you go through the window, you trigger the trap. That feels really good. Um, but we haven't seen anything too uh, game-breaking or punishing inside of there. And w- internally, we have a lot of trap placers. Uh, David, David, the GM, is notorious for placing a million traps. And oh my god, every time I play with David, I step into his traps. Every time, every time. And I hit every single one of them when I'm in his team. <laughs> exactly. It always gets me. And he's like, Scott, I pinged it. And I'm like, I know, but I, yeah, I yeah, missed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we've all had that teammate for sure who's a little zealous about it. Uh, <laughs> yep, that's, yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, I, I that's yeah. So it, it looks like we're on a ridge here. You know, I'm seeing some train tracks. Um, yep. Talk to us more about the kind of, the kind of particular biomes or, or you know, the, the feel of these areas. What we really wanted to capture across the board was this feeling that when you're on the mountain, we want you to feel like you are on the mountain. Now, you still have places that you can hide and all those elements. Also, if this is golden time of day, it looks different. I guess because of the new engine, new lighting. Like, it's not like the nuke time of day, you know, like the sky is not like super bright but what you're still looks like yellow but right better. here one of the biggest changes that we've made to our f- yeah see like the sun isn't like blinding across the entire sky it's actually like nice to look at now you know or is it new time of day looks like the golden one to me forest is that they're dense forests right when you see these pine straws and you see the all these like needles right these these needle trees it makes player detection a little bit harder. And so you have to be more cognizant of, okay, what's around me, where the players could be, what sound is triggering. Yeah, as I said, you know, like it's gonna be easy to snipe, a lot of like open areas, long fields, but also like easy to hide, you know, the thick forest, the mines. Which also I think it's good. informed our decision to say, hey, you know, we need two new sounds. Oh, they, they showed the map. So Blackthorn Stockyard, Gasworks, Terminus Railroad, East Mountain Corn. Odun one stone, Grizzly Lodge. Yeah, so these are the mines, you see? The two mines that are connecting in the middle of the map. 
Those are not compounds, they are just mines to move. I guess there is compound here, 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 here. That's the four ones they talk about, they were connected. That's the oil, Kingfisher, Greystone, Miner's Folly, Machine. Yeah, I mean, looks nice. You don't see that much water, you know? I mean, crossing the water is gonna be dangerous, but yeah, there is the railway from Terminus Railway out, of course. Damn, damn, that's the new map, man. And the mines. See, like, if you get, like, boss here, or, like, boss here, and extraction here, obviously you won't even need the mines. But they're gonna be, I guess, good against, like, rotating in the middle of the map fights, or just running, I guess, you yeah. know? ...animal attractors, so we actually introduced bats, and we also introduced cows. Bats and cows as a new animal attractor. Nice, so, like, a sound trap, you know? And so when we saw the bats earlier in the video. They just didn't get scared. When you hear a cow, you're like, oh, okay, I, player's coming from this spot, I know that's where the cow is. And you... But it's gonna be like the same, like, like a horse, you know? You hear horse, it's people, now you're gonna hear cow, it's people. Kind of nice. learned that over time. Um, but, you know, I'd say key... More verticality, you know? I mean, more variety of sound traps. The element Very for good. us was, we wanted to capture the feeling of what it was like to be in Colorado, and how we can lend itself very nicely to hunt showdown gameplay. And at the beginning, we had very dense trees, and it didn't create the best gameplay experience, so we kind of trimmed them down. And then we started intentionally opening up more sight lines so snipers would actually have um, a pretty good time playing on this map. Because before, you can imagine when you look at all those trees, like sniper players, like what line of sight do you actually get on I people? See. So we made intentional decisions to kind of make sure that that play style was very prominent here. Right, I mean, certainly we'll with verticality and those long sight lines, it feels like you guys are really accommodating sniping. Yes, but at the same time, bullet drop, you know? Don't forget bullet drop. But likewise, with the introduction of bullet drop, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming a little bit more difficult uh, in, in some ways. So is, is, am I thinking about that the right way? You're sort of like, you're not, you're not pushing sniping to the side or even anything close to eliminating it. I didn't see it, I swear. Behavior. <laughs> But it has this new dimension, literally. Yeah, correct. It's got a, like, sniping has a whole new experience to it. You have bullet drop that you have to take into consideration. And then in this biome, the other thing you have... Like, look, you know, I said before, like, the... It's not like 150, 180 meters. Maybe in 200 at, like, the end. You have to take into consideration is... Sure, you might actually get this sight line on the enemy. Yeah, so look, there is, like, one entrance. That's the one mine. And the other mine is behind him when he came from. So, like, you see how they connected, I guess but because it's a longer sightline do you have the ability to actually push your advantage after you've downed that player and then be able to wipe out the team or burn his body right and what we see sure throughout all of our play tests is a lot of players like if you intentionally want to snipe you have avenues for that play style to work but you have to be deliberate with it and that's the key for us we want each of these play styles to be deliberate and when you accommodate this landscape we also need to make sure that Players who are running only the melee AI. options. If you want to run just the katana with Berserker, oh, you have green. the ability to take deliberate decisions and deliberate pathing to be able to put the advantage on your side. I'm guessing, like, you know, above the mine, there is truth. Did he say Berserker? I thought he said the uh, Marshallist. Oh, Berserker? Confirmed to come next update as well? Maybe. Maybe. Reversible area for, for Correct. players. So, like, if, for example, somebody has a bounty and they run into the mine to get to an extract and they're... I, I can track them above ground, right? I can sort of go run in parallel with them. Do you think that's a viable technique? Oh, that that's gonna work. Yeah, for sure. And so the, the hard piece there is... Well, the balance that we wanted to strike is if you choose to get the bounty and you go through the mine, you're going to have a direct shot and you have the advantage because you have the direct shot because you're under the mine. If you're above and you're running around the mountaintop, you might have to take a little bit of a detour. And so you get this cat and mouse game of like, oh, okay, where's the bounty carrier going to go? Are they going to continue to go so south? The are they going to go right? I know they have three exits. How am I going to take advantage? See, these are the bats on top, but they, they don't get scared. And I wonder, like, you're going to take bounty? You're going to run through the mine? They're going to follow you? You put traps, you know? And that might work, you know? That might work. And you mentioned bats a little moment ago. Uh, you know, certainly those those noise hazards are some of my uh, annoyances in Hunt Showdown and a really purposeful part of the game. Do bats only appear in the caves or the mines? Right now, yes, that is correct. We have, we, have, we, we have aspirations to put them in more places, you know, like inside of certain buildings to give you additional sound cues right now. But, you know, the bats in the mines just... 
I can imagine they're gonna add them to all maps, you know, like Chapel or Stillwater. They're gonna add them there as well. Feels like such a slam dunk for us from a thematic sense that that's where we put all the focus on. And candidly, you need a little bit more distinct audible callouts when people are leaving the mines because you have that cover. It's very good though, because like you're gonna be in a compound, you hear bats, and you know exactly where to look, you know? Like, oh, look, people are coming out of the entrance of the mines, and you know exactly where to look. It's gonna be like, if you hear that, you know where they are exactly, you know? That'd be nice. How do you compare this map to the, the other maps in the game? I mean, we've heard about verticality, but in other, other aspects, it's, it's more what and less what might you say. I wish these were working, man. Say. I'd say map four feels completely different than any map that you've ever played inside of Hunt Showdown. And so when you take into consideration the biome and all of the verticality, the dense forest, the new compounds, and a lot of our compounds we've actually built fundamentally different. We actually changed the DNA as to how we construct them. Before, you know, you'd have a traditional compound, right? You would have, you'd have an outside perimeter that would have intentional holes, and then inside of there you'd have the boss building, and then you'd have some satellite buildings inside of there. What you see in this one is we actually have what we called internally kind of like mega structures in a couple of them where you have to commit to the area to then be a part of it. So I think this map more than ever is your loadout determines how you're going to play the map very. That's what I said, you know, intentionally, whereas I mean, you know, if you're going to use shotguns, you go through mines. If you're going to snipe, you don't want to go mines, you know, you know, if you play in the other maps, if you take a sniper, you have a lot of different angles that you get to take and you can put that you can put it to use generally anywhere this on this though. map it's very intentional as to what you take so if you take a sniper you're going to choose different routes than if you were to take a shotgun or yeah, even sure, a long ammo sure. weapon in general right without a scope you have a little bit more verticality and you have a little bit more and you have the mines in the middle but you have these routes that you can take that are a little bit more covered than what you're used to in our existing maps you have more surprises Right, so you have a lot of more emergent fights that happen in areas that true. previously would be underutilized in our other maps. So it's really, you're kind of always, it's pulling a lever almost as to when you're going to get into engagement and how it's going to work. So more surprises, more intentionality in your loadout, more intentionality on really? audio and how you approach any one decision. And then for, you know, the verticality piece, this is one of the coolest compounds that we did. It's quarry. So it's oh, the quarry. Yeah. It's our take on it. Um, so very similar to any of the undergrounds that we've ever done, but we intentionally built it to say, okay, what are the problems that we have with our underground layers and how can we build around that and really fix it? They just made it and bigger. So this one, you know, you have a lot of options. And so you have a, you have a building on top of you that you're able to fortify. You can Oof. also leave the compound, but because it's more tight and constricted and it's in this quarry, you can also fortify this better than almost any other compound on this map. Yeah, I mean, mm. looking at this footage here, I see elevator. it just seems very big. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I know, like, I've, I've, of course, I've put hundreds of hours into the different areas already in Hunt, but like, I don't know, somehow this, this seems larger. It's way... Yeah, the new font as well. See, like, it's different font, different, like, UI. Even, like, the number here is different. This, this seems larger. It's way more grand. And I, I'd say, you know, Stefan Heinrich and the entire art team on this map have done such an incredible job of capturing how big this world is and how far we can push it. And that's um, a big shout out to our engine team for giving us the ability to be able to do that. So yeah, the, comp the compounds are huge, man. Like they are all different. Like, dude, there was a city that's burning. And then there is like these mines or the quarry, you know, then you have the uh, field, like the oil. We to push the boundaries Crazy. across the board. We want it to feel bigger than what it is. Even though the dimensions of the map are the same, we yes. want players to feel this sense of verticality and this intentionality behind it to drive all of their decisions. How is, how is performance so far on this map been oh, for no. you guys from a, from a technical listen. perspective? Because I know you're, you're adding DLSS for Let's example. Let's get stuff. Yes. DLSS? So, you know, I can just say, like, we've kind of exceeded all of our expectations as to what we would thought we thought we would be able to get on this map exceeded and that's mostly shout outs to the new engine for us empowering us to be able to do that but performance is as good if not way better than our way existing better maps. so right oh way better than existing maps damn so it's new engine it's looking better it's way more new stuff and it's running better we'll see <laughs> We'll see, man. Depends on your PCs, I guess.
But again, because they're upgrading to DX12, which on the newer gens, it's supposed to put more pressure from your CPU to your GPU. You know, the more load. It might run better on higher end PCs, but on the lower end PCs, I'm not sure, you know. Right, right here, we're seeing what, what, what looks like a mining facility or... It, it, is Oro gold this mine. an example? Bad gold. So I guess, yeah, it's connecting to the mines and I guess of one of the mega structures you talked about but this is o oro gordo mine and so right here i mean look you approach the compound and you see everything you know look here you come out of the mines you see like a lot here is another is that entrance to the mines another one you will like probably entrance inside you know you see like how many ways to approach it like you can go here it's kind of an open but yeah door window window door maybe here Probably underground. Then there is the side building. Did so many ways to get there. I think. You know, when you think about like traditional hunt compounds, right? You can kind of see a perimeter here, but this this structure backs directly into the mine. And so when you enter the mm. boss layer, you also have a direct shot into the mines. But that also means you have to take. I see. You have to be cognizant of the mine that's. Right. So if someone banish here, you take the bounty, you run to the mines and camp. <laughs> I mean. We'll see, we'll see. As I said, you know, it's like many connections, so maybe they won't be able to camp since there are so many ways. Right there. And so this mega structure connects, uh, it's kind of like an L shape. So this isn't, the, what you're seeing isn't necessarily the boss building, but it's connected to it. And so inside of here, you can take a lift to go across, or you have to choose a route that's a little bit more risky and puts you exposed. At a top level, if you... Again, the map, I wish they show more of like inside the compound, you know, how it looks from inside. I read us the map. Again, the two mines. Yeah. There seems to be like big gaps, like this one. Maybe this one as well. I mean, then there's like no gap between these. It feels like we'll this, this isn't like too out of line. It's obviously like 16 compounds, which I think is the same as the other Hunt Showdown yep. maps. Um, but it's Every map has 16 compounds and three main compounds, but it's double clue, you know, like double clue compounds. But, you know, we've got this bird's eye view. Can you kind of talk me through the design well, players, direction of what I we're seeing so. here? I can see the railroad, for example, threading through a couple compounds. So one of the biggest changes that we made from the design direction side is in maps one through three, um, we have this terminology called POIs. And POIs are compounds which always give two clues, essentially. And no, in no. our existing maps, what we would do is we would say, hey, the two two clue, like the POIs would always be in central locations, right? But you want to, and so we do that because everyone has a fair opportunity in order to get there. We flipped that on its head for Colorado and we said, Ooh. hey, we're actually going to put the POIs on the outskirts. So Preston Oil is mm. a POI that features clue two here. clues as well as Gasworks and... Um, Hey. Miner's Folly, those three all have uh, two clues inside. That's interesting. Like spawning here, getting double clues straight out of nowhere is going to be very good. I mean, it's going to change the gameplay a lot, I think, like how people move on the map. And I guess, I don't know what to expect from this. Kind of interesting, you know? Double clues on each of the map. Okay. Inside of there, so those are POIs. And what that's done is that's kind of changed how players play. Because in our existing maps, yeah, exactly. you, know, you have that moment where you're like, oh, okay, well... I can skip this first compound, go to the second one and get two clues, and then that changes the way that you play. Whereas people are going to be less predictable where they go, you know, I guess. In this one, if you'd spawn at Kingfisher Foundry in the bottom, in the bottom middle, you might actually just go left to Preston Oil to go ahead and get two clues. And that changes your pathing I and it changes your decision making. As Let's think about spawn points, like, like one spawn point here, maybe you have to go far. I wonder if there's gonna be more or less than other maps, you know? It's like, I wonder, if I spawn here, maybe I'll go Prenzen. If I spawn here, definitely not, I think. Depends, depends, depends. As to how you want to approach any one decision. Um, so that was a big part of it. Um, but from there, you know, it all started with our anchoring statement of, we wanted to have mountains in the middle, and those mountains need to have mines. And so we started with, okay, let's create two mines, we're going to create these two mines and these mountain ranges in the middle. And how can we mold everything else around that? And does it play well? I, I guess I'm also it. wondering, are there any compounds that have, or maybe you can just sort of talk about one yeah. as an example, like 
where the, the adjacent compound has an interesting relationship to another compound beside it. That's really FBS. a big focal point uh, of the engagements happen between O'Donovan Stone, La Plata Mine, Oro Gordo Mine, and Split River. So here, here, here. Oh, so I guess that's where the most PvP is. I mean, in the middle. Okay. So those are the four in the middle. Okay. Now, Montero's Malt has a line of sight on O'Donovan Stone, but O'Donovan Stone can see Gasworks, for example. Ah, so from this, you'll be able to snipe to Gasworks. Interesting. And from this, you can see here. So, sniping potential. And they can also see the crossing of people going into Montero's Malt. So if you spawn Grizzly Lodge, you're like, cool. I got O'Donovan Stone. Now, if I'm playing a sniper, I'm watching that cross, and that's intentional for me to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I like to do currently, even on the other maps, is just kind of rush the middle of the map and you wait for people to come there, you know? So I guess kind of the same, right? You spawn here, you can go here and can snipe people going from Gasworks to here. You spawn Grizzly yes. Lodge, you're like, cool. Two I got O'Donovan Stone. Now, if I'm playing a sniper, I'm watching that cross, and that's intentional for me to be able to do that. Um, but really, the, the whole core of fast rotations and being able to get good lines of sight on players ends up being between the two mines because that is an elevated position. And so you can very quickly move from Split River to La Plata Mine. Yeah, so the sniper is going to be in the middle because there is the most views. But at the same time, you can rush into them from the mines where I don't know if they're going to hear you, probably not. But like in their back, you know? I mean... If you want to snipe, you need to get to some spots, but you also can get killed, you know? It's not like you can run away or... Yeah. And Interesting. that is a big game changer for us um, as to how people play and how they position, because there is a strategy that we see inside of our playtest where people will just go into the middle, and then they set up control around that, they fortify the mines to the best of their ability, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're just playing to the strength of their loadout to say, okay, well... I got one clue. I know it could be in La Plata Mine or it could be in Split River. It's gonna be interesting. And now man. we're gonna just see where people are. There is gonna be a lot of traps in the mines. That's, that's for sure. Hmm. I mean, I guess as long as you focus on objective, maybe it's like I show the map. You know, I think you can like avoid getting sniped. We'll see. We'll see. Coming from and they get the advent, advent, the advantage from that. The other thing that we did was basically right between Deadfall Timber. Deadfall Timber, La Plata Azir. Mine, and Kingfisher Foundry, there is a watchtower. And I think we can see it in the video. I Azir. forget exactly this where one. it's at, but there's a spot that you can see this, you know, the iconic hunt showdown watchtower, right? Also, new door for the toilet, if you noticed. That's a huge, you see? Updated toilet door, amazing, did Showdown watchtower, <laughs> right? We put that on a hill. And when you're in there, you can see Deadfall. Oh. Look how much view you get. It's kind of blurry. That's the mine entrance. There is probably another one. There is the middle, another mine entrance, the entire compound. Oof. Sniper spot, man. Fall timber. You can see a direct line of sight on deadfall timber. You can see almost centered crosshair. All of La Plata mine. And you actually get to see Kingfisher as well. Keep in mind, bullet drop, you know, bullet drop. But. A lot of open area, yeah. but let's say like, you know, let's say you come from here and there is guy in the tower and you have shotgun. Like, what do you do? Jump down? I think, I don't think there is going to be spots where you'll be, where they shot more than three bullets at you, you know, it's like, I think you can move to cover pretty quickly. You know, they're not going to shoot more than three bullets at you. Plot of mine and you actually get to see Kingfisher as well. Crossing. Oh, I don't know about this though, because look, crossing from here to like to this compound, oof, that's gonna be tough. Maybe you have some cover here, maybe a little here, but here, you know, like hmm, crossing like this is gonna be a bit, dif bit difficult. Again, I guess you can push the sniper from the forest when they don't see you. Or maybe, is there water? You can go like through here, maybe they won't see you there. It seems like from what we've seen of the mines, you've 
you've not tried to make them too bottlenecky, right? Correct. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a bit. We learned that lesson early on in playtesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the more the more that's... choke pointy it was, the less likely players were to go in it. Yeah, I mean that can be intimidating unto itself. Like it seemed like there was a lot of choice available to me in terms of diversion and sort of losing people in the mines in a good way. So La Plata Mine is another one of our mega structures. So this oh. one is basically one giant building that sticks together um, and has a bunch of different meaning. But the other thing is, is depending on where you approach, it's either you're fighting Ooh. all the way on an Look at that entrance, man. upward angle or you're fighting down. So if you come from the mines, you're at the highest point of elevation of this compound and you are looking down and you're seeing every area down to the left. Whereas if you come from here, you're fighting up. If you come from the lower end, you it's also like new duck cage, I think. It looks different. You but have a very good idea. Oh, that's the tower he was in, right? But now he's looking at. No. Is that the same tower? I think it is. Idea as to where your enemies can be. But if you come from the higher side, we want to make sure that, well, you might not have perfect information. So you have to be more intentional with where your sight lines are and you're more exposed. So higher risk to come from the higher verticality, lower risk to come from lower. So this, yeah. we see tons of engagements happen in and around this area. So this right here, you get to see this. And so if we pause right here, if you don't mind, this is La Plata Mine. You have full view over this. And you also see the entrance from the North Mine that comes out, one of the entrances. To the right, where those pine trees are, that is where the South Mine, one of the South Mine exits are, as well as the one left, no? right over to the right. So you are gaining a lot of intel here right over this hill that you see in the back distance that is the connective part to split river and so that this whole area ends up being this massive contention point and when the ball when you get a one boss contract and it's in one of these two mines or uh, one of these two compounds oh, that's gonna be crazy oh. man oof i don't know if i like this one actually because dude imagine the boss is here you know you banish the bounty. Okay, so one team is gonna sit here. One team might be hiding in the forest. One team might be on this tower. Yeah, they are actually... That's gonna be very bad to defend. Like, to do something, you know? Let's say, like, you play shotgun in this compound, and there is team probably sitting here, team probably sitting here, here, and right side. Where are you gonna escape, you know? Where are you gonna go? It's gonna be... We'll see. It's true, good it's luck, true. man. It's, it's a hoot. This right here actually does a really good job of capturing the exact feel that we wanted to get, which was we have these scaling mountains, we have this big world with these massive mountains. Can players expect any uh, maybe Last Easter eggs? Uh, obviously, oh. you've had some that refer to movies in particular. We love the exploration part of this, uh, of the Easter eggs, but the team, what? as soon as we wrap up, we're always like, hey, what can we do that's pretty cool from the Easter egg perspective that can surprise and delight our players who are really looking for him? So the Rachtazi Easter egg is here. There's a few. It's there's not. a few. I'm sure. just saying. It, it's been interesting because you know I've, I've you been in go the look. Game industry. I don't know if you're gonna find one. Many games kind of use verticality as mm -hmm. as a, a kind of talking point and a and piece of identity. And you know, of course, I understand what it means, but I guess like from Both. a game design perspective, what is it about? verticality about these kind of you know z-axis <laughs> designs right that like <laughs> makes a game like hunt more interesting like functionally this what is it doing for me as a player? such a like new type of compound as well we have like a burning compound we have huge query we have a compound that's breaking down oh my god man player you know with my teammates right. and with my opponents verticality is good when it's intentional and by being intentional i mean if your game's design lends itself well to it, you can lean into it a little bit more. And for Hunt, you know... Wait, wait, wait. I swear, there is like a hole in the mountain, no? I see like a light. Sorry. You know, Hunt is a sandbox title, right? We want players to bring whatever tools and weapons that they want to bring into the map, and they have to solve the Here puzzle... End. Yep. of how they kill the boss and get out their own way, right? And so for us, more options that we give the players that are meaningful, the better. And what we want to do in Hunt is make sure that, okay, verticality. Obviously, if you have the higher position, by default, we learned this from... They mentioned it with, like, riders, you know? Star Wars, you have the advantage, Look. right? 
and so for us, we know that the more reward you get, the higher risk we have to put on it. And so for us, when we look at verticality throughout our levels, especially inside at, at like a per compound basis, we say, well, if you're going to take the vertical position, you're going to be more exposed. And in a game that's one life where you lose your hunter if you die, you have to make a very deliberate decision on is your hunter expendable or are you good enough to be able to pull it off? So for us, I think it leans into the high stakes that we always want to achieve, which is to say, here's a problem. How you want to solve it is your choice. And I think that's one of the most powerful pieces nice. of what we've done Sandbox. here in Mammon's Gulch, but Voltre. also just in Hunt Showdown is we're not prescriptive. We're not See, like the water is going left and right. It actually splits, you know, you can see not that. saying this is the only way you can play. And the more options we give our players inside of the map, the better it is for them to experience and continue to pour thousands of hours into it. So I'd say that's really like my key is verticality for us really just lends itself Mother. so well to who we are and what kind of game it is. Because mm -hmm. as you add more verticality, you get more sound cues, right? It's not, we aren't doing jump pads or adding these other elements that allow players to get onto verticality with relative ease, there's a cost. I like this guy. He knows how to talk about Hunt Showdown. I like Any I like. decision that you make has a cost. And that- I feel like this dev, you know, Scott, I know Scott, obviously, you know, we kind of friends, I could say. He plays Hunt, he knows Hunt, he knows what he's talking about. And yeah, it's not like they give him a list of things to say. He likes to talk cost about it. Cost can be consequences and they can also just result in your death. So sure, you might be able to climb a ladder and get into a high spot, but yeah. now you're on a roof and also the ladder was making all this noise so people have a better idea of where you're at. The game has always been one where seeing is a skill, right? You know, the ability to spot players in different environments, the uh, different lighting conditions even, is something that Appreciate moment. <laughs> you can bring to the table as a player. Oh, um, and, and yeah, that makes me wonder a little bit about uh, weather conditions ah. and Ash how Bloom rain. you see them interacting with this map. Yeah, so, you know, at first we're going to start off with, you know, three times of day, kind of the traditional. We have one nighttime and then two daytime maps. And then from there, you know, we're, we're really excited. Okay. So first, they're going to start with day and the golden, I guess. We saw both of them in the trailer and night, which. We didn't. Maybe we saw, we saw as well, like, one or a few. I wonder how long, though. Because, like, one map and three time of days, one map is for 30 days. I'm excited, though. Excited to get fog, fog. into this um, into this map, as well as Thunder Shower. We think Thunder Shower is one of the Rain. most dynamic uh, times of day that we have. And we think it has played really well on this, but it's not quite ready to ship with it on launch. So... It makes sense because new engine, you know, rain is gonna be. I think it's gonna actually look insane, no? On the new engine, see like that, reworking it to make it look better. Fog as well, I can imagine it looking better. So yeah, those are gonna be added later with the with the other maps, maybe. What we don't know, and I'm excited about, is which ones we want to try on this. You know, well, one of the fan favorites has been Inferno, right? Ooh. Now Inferno. Could Imagine. flip this entire experience all all on its head, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. Oh, they didn't even start. I mean, Inferno is pretty hard to make because they need to like place all the fires and all the adjusting. Like, I think it probably takes most work for like level design. Because you know, rain is just yeah, you make rain everywhere. You know, just make it that it doesn't rain in the buildings. But Inferno, it's actually they need to place those big fires. They need to like make a collision. So I guess that's the most work. But Inferno on this map, oosh. Like imagine you are on the mountain and you see the fire everywhere in the distance. Oh my god, man. Conversation oh. that I'm very interested in having. Ooh, One of the things I've always enjoyed about Hunt is that it does not hold the player's hand. You know, like, I think in almost all aspects of the game, like, you guys are really trusting players to make their own fun, to kind of come up with their own strategies and tactics. But of course, there are aspects of the level design that are subtly conveying certain ideas or approaches you know can you maybe name some of those that, that players may not realize i mean obviously like you know when you put a, a light on something or something is bright 
compared to the what's around it, like that is drawing your eye toward it, I think, in, in most situations. Yeah, so, you know, obviously lighting is a big piece. Pathways that are on the floor, like dirt paths or mud trails or clearings inside of a forest, those things all kind of intentionally lead the player's eye into it. Um, but the other thing is, is when you look at our levels, one of the things that we try to achieve is as you're just walking, like really good level design ends up feeling like a flowing river, right? Tumble moment. Which means, Tumble you know, when, a, when you watch a river kind of flow, you watch it kind of move around the rocks and kind of form to it, and it's very smooth and intentional. We always are looking at, hey, how do we stick together these two pieces in a way that makes sense for the player? And when you see here, right, right, like just in that moment as you were walking down, you can chart two direct paths around this individual mountain pass right or this little rock formation right you can either choose to go over to the right because you saw that there was a path over there or you can go to the left and these tiny little can open area here so i guess if you get caught in the middle here oosh, i think you're dead but you know you can choose to go around take cover little decisions need to be conveyed and they need to be clear to the player that supply point though ah oh, man i don't like that placement like dude you're gonna be there on the supply point people are gonna be on these rocks you're dead man you're dead because you know they are made of wood or this little rock formation, right? You're not gonna hide there. You can either choose to go over to the this right is gonna be you dead, saw man. that there was a path over there, or you can go to the left. And these tiny little... Like, where are you gonna hide there, you know? <laughs> ...decisions need to be conveyed, and they need to... And if you wanna run away from there, you can't either. Yeah, this supply is gonna be bad. ...clear to the player. And we want to reveal them at the moment where they will make those calls. Because if you reveal it too early, it's kind of information overload. You know? is having huge but when you well, reveal yeah. it at the right time, you're making the player say, okay, I can make a choice. When you enter a compound, we want players to be able to make a decision of, I've committed That's to breaking into this perimeter. Where's my next move? What's the next tactical decision? And some of that can just be a building. Some of that can be medium cover, but that's the key for us is trying to figure out, Smoke. hey, what can lead the player to make more informed decisions on position? I feel like a lot of open area, but there is like some covers, you know, there is like, you can go down a bit. The thing when you're thinking Maybe about, about uh, the the compounds ultimately is each approach we call them approaches right yeah, you'll so be able to hide. each approach needs to be able to fit like kind of like a specific weapon in mind so we try to make sure that all of our compounds have at least a 360 degree sometimes 270 degree approach points but those approach points are intentionally designed where we're like hey. yeah like if someone is like here they can snipe you but i guess there's a lot of cover a lot hey, of ways to go around this is where snipers are going to kind of come from we believe because of these reasons. Here's an area where it has more dense forest, so shotgun players can go through there. But then you hit a choke point. And so you're going from the perimeter into the compound, right? Each of those choke points are built in such a way where you're dealing with A, animal attractors that you have to deal with. B, you might have to deal with meatheads, right? And then if a meathead's in front of a gate that you already have to open because that comes oh, at a cost, now you have to change your strategy or you're like well i guess i'm gonna kill this meathead quickly with like a dynamite give my position away and dynamite. break in or i'm gonna reposition myself so all of those things add to the mix and where what ai spawns inside of there you know it could be it could be an armored with uh chains like a wired uh it could be a wired it could be an emulator all those Chain things are random it. and so Ooh. you always have a different experience every time you go into these uh, compounds, which really changes the dynamic. We don't want you to have one way to solve the puzzle. We want you to be able to always solve the puzzle different ways because we present a different challenge at you. Well, Scott, you know, thanks so much for talking to us, uh, bringing us through all these details. I think I think there's surely a lot more here uh, we could spend time we talking about. We saw a about. lot so, of the new map. You know, looking forward to discovering this map for myself. Um, and, and thanks again. Dude, we saw a lot of the new map, you know? Like, a lot. I mean, it looks like very sniper heavy, but keep in mind the bullet drop. And I feel like there is a, like some few spots, but keep in mind the mines. The mines, what you're gonna do with sniper, right? Like, it seems like a lot of open fields, but because of the verticality, I think there is gonna be like a lot of cover. The rocks, mountains, forests, right? So I think, as I said, you know, it's like if you play sniper, you're gonna follow certain sniper path where you can snipe and if you play shotgun you're just gonna follow like safe path you know let's do review over the scenes
Look around at this land. You have the mountain in the back, you know. What do you think you see? Some lodges. The new improved water, you know, with the new engine. The lighting. Earth's bounty and splendor. The forest, though. Oh my god. See, the forest is gonna be so good to fight in. Splendor, right? Rich woodlands, untouched mountain peaks, and beneath the surface. Oh, nice. Like cabin in the woods. Toilet. With some pipe, I don't know. Peaks and beneath the surface. The mountains. That could define a generation. What is this like? Mining quarry? Look, there is a ladder, there is a ground falling off. Amazing. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you see, like, there is a lot of depth. Yeah, a lot of depth. That might have been true. Huge once. fields, mountain in the back. But. Oh! But it goes on the ground. An Easter egg here. Some schools. And mines. Took everything this land had and wanted La Plata, what does it mean? Silver, no? Yeah, so that's like a silver. I guess they mine silver there. You can see this is probably the event thing is because that's what icon they used in the previous events. I don't know what's this. But yeah, I mean, mines did. Mines. Yeah, La Plata, La Plata. Looks so nice. This is for like oil, no? They mine the oil in there. So like interesting, kinda open, you know? Kinda open areas. Reminds me of Stillwater or Lawson. The wells ran dry. So they did anything they could. Dead trees. Terrible things. And some done in the dark. Burning compound. It's gonna look nice in nighttime. The land actually. The living. What are these? Bows? Bows. Bulls or cows? Yes. Dead. The only thing that blooms is rot. And you see, like the theme. You know, the theme is like different everywhere. Corruption. Oro Gordo. What is that? Fat gold mine. Okay, so here they mine some fat gold. And here is the mountain. So I guess it. You know, they mine from the mountain. You see like the mining compound. Oh nice. Mine. Is this the entrance to the mine? It looks like, no? You can go there. Actually. <laughs> Yield only darkness mine. and suffering. Of course killers like you will keep The new hunters? I don't think they have new weapons. Come. You're the only ones who Is this like Did they imagine you could go there? How's it called? You know, these like, I guess they... Probably the wagons of the gold, no? Like... Here they, they put it there. The ones who can prosper here. here. Ah, yeah, this is like playable area, you know? Good sniping spot, I guess. Good sniping spot. If you can actually go there. Who knows, maybe it's for cinematic. The only ones who can prosper here. That's a rival. Nothing special. Breathe deep, take your fill. Welcome to the forest is gonna look very nice. Welcome to 1896. 1896. Did you want showdown? Sniping map, you think? I mean, yeah, there's sort of like open areas, but at the same time, there's the mines, you know. So like, if you go mines, you cannot get sniped. And let's say, I mean, you can probably like hide in the trees as well. You know, just if you're gonna be crossing an open, it might be scarier. Like here, if you stand here with a sniper. Somewhere. 